we are in the Cayman Islands. It is hot. It is humid. It's supposed to be. It's 200% humidity. 200% humidity. And I just got that word uh, from Walter Mustin. He would know because he is a PhD. And he is the chief research officer here at the Cayman Turtle Farm. Uh, we, where we are doing the show for this particular segment. Uh, welcome to the show, Walter. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I thought the islands are supposed to be cool and breezy and a place to relax and chill out. What's wrong? That's what I heard, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you ended up here? Yeah. We do have, a, we have two seasons here, Boyd. Hot and hotter. Hot and hotter. <laughs> well, your research really isn't about the weather. Uh, you're here at the Cayman Turtle Farm where you are raising green sea turtles. Green sea turtles, that's right. And these are an endangered creature. That's correct. Some of them you're raising for consumption because there is a market for turtle meat, but if you're raising them on a farm, the view is that's less that will be killed from the wild. People are gonna take them if they're endangered or not because they've got this craving for turtle meat. But you're also returning many to the wild. What's, how many have been released? Well, Boyd, we're, we're a self-sustaining farm, as you say. So we're a closed system. We don't bring in any wild eggs anymore or any wild females or males, no adults. So everything that is released has been born here on this farm. So since 1968, we've released about 31,000 turtles. 31,000? 31, 31,000. If it goes all according to plan, they would be producing eggs in the wild and turtles replenishing the population that is endangered. But of course, turtles, green sea turtles, don't start produce laying eggs that will hatch until what age 20 25 the, the data we have from the Bahamas and Australia indicates that they're 20 to 30 years old before they're laying viable eggs we do know now that some that we have released are coming back and laying their own eggs here on Cayman Islands and how do you know that a previous researcher dr. Hendrickson um, developed a tagging method he called the living tag he grafted tissue from the plaster in the lower shell of the turtle, which is white in color, onto one of the scoots on the top shell, or carapace. And if people have seen a turtle shell, you know that it's, it's got squares almost. You call them scoots on the back. These are hard scoots, but they grow as the turtle grows. They grow as they grow. And if you plant that living tissue from the underneath part of the shell, uh, the underneath uh, the belly of the turtle on right. the shell, it will grow too. So you'll see the white get bigger in that That's spot. That's right. It'll be like a living tag or a tattoo on that animal. The key then is, do you see any of those turtles with the tattoos showing up on the beach or do they just show up on... Well, we know tattoos show up on beaches because we, <laughs> we've seen our teenagers. That's where the tattoos go to live. And is it the same with the turtles? Yes. yes. Actually, last summer, season 2010, five females that were hatched here 25 or 30 years ago and released with living tags on them, returned to our beaches and laid their own eggs. It's working. It's working. So it's gone full circle. And the Department of Environment estimates that the total wild green sea turtle population that's coming back to all three Cayman Islands numbers approximately 60 turtles. So our five represent, this year, represent 15 or so percent. Here on National Geographic Weekend, we're talking with uh, Walter Muston, who is uh, the chief researcher at the Cayman uh, Turtle Farm, uh, growing turtles for commercial use, but also doing a conservation effort. One, you teach the people here and tourists who come in and school kids about the importance of the green sea turtle and what's happening to them and the need to protect them and their nest. And you're replenishing the wild population of them as you take a certain percentage to put back out. And a turtle, here at the farm, you've got a pond that they live in and then they come up on this sandy beach you created inside a fenced area. This is their beach. But in the wild, they always come back to where they were born. The turtles can't get through the fence. Is it good enough just to get close and come to the real beach here at the Caymans? You know, we know these turtles are swimming great distances and somehow making their way back to their natal beaches. So how do they do that? That's a one good of, question. <laughs> one of the thoughts is that they navigate, they have some magnetic sense and they're able to sense magnetic fields and, and navigate in that way. There may be chemosensory receptors that are like salmon, helping them find a scent associated with that beach. With that in mind, we use the same sand from Seven Mile Beach in our nesting boxes. So if there is an imprinting effect, uh, we want it to happen. If they're nesting. sensing something in the sand, they, they know the general area, the beaches here on a certain part of Cayman Islands, so they're coming to this area. 
and lo and behold, they're getting the same sand they were born in, right. even though it's been moved a few. How far are we from the beach here? We're about 200 yards. Okay, so they're, they're within 200 yards of where they started. <laughs> they lay roughly how many eggs each time? They lay 80 to 100 eggs. 80 to 100 eggs, and your breeding turtles will do this how often in a season do they make a nest and lay eggs? Last summer's average was 5.4 clutches per female. So she comes up on the beach, lays 100 eggs, says goodbye, goes back in the water. 10 days later, she comes back up on the same beach, digs another hole, lays another set of 80 eggs, and so forth. So they may lay four to 500 eggs That's in a season. They're a little laying machines. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good news that the program is uh, working on two levels. One is stopping people from taking wild turtles because it's hard to change cultural traditions to get them to stop eating turtles. So now they can get them farm raised from this one small location. And even more importantly, you're getting them back into the wild, increasing that population because they are endangered. Turtle meat is part of the culture of this, these islands. So it's been in the diet for 500 years. It was, they were here when Columbus came. And to say to someone you can't eat any more turtles, like, well, it's difficult. I think if you listen to the talk shows and the subject comes up and young callers call in, you might find that the younger Comanians are shying away from. That's also part of the program, you're educating them here. Every school child in Cayman, almost every school child comes through this, this farm and learns something about conservation and this unique resource, and, and that's very important.